Today, NASA held a press conference that has some interesting implications on exoplanet study and the number of Earth-like exoplanets that might exist in the galaxy. More, they announced the discovery of 219 further candidates for exoplanets, all discovered in the Kepler data, and most interestingly, 10 of these are around the size of Earth and orbit within the habitability zone of their star. This is really the final result of a mission cataloging project NASA has been doing with the Kepler data. In effect, it's a catalog of candidates for scientists studying exoplanets to use in order to study and verify if the candidates are indeed exoplanets and then move on to further study of them. And there were a lot of them. Kepler was a wildly successful mission. Its primary mission was to essentially gaze and periodically photograph a small section of sky in the constellation of Cygnus over a long period of time. By doing that, the mission was able to capture dips and light curves for thousands of stars within the field of view of the spacecraft. That led to the discovery of 4,034 exoplanet candidates to date. More than half of these have been verified at this point, including 50 Earth-sized planets within habitable zones, 30 of which have been verified, according to NASA's press release, link in the description below. But Kepler collected data on more than just exoplanets. In the process, it collected a wealth of data on stars themselves that is quite helpful for stellar astronomers, especially those interested in variable stars. It also yielded a lot of data on multiple star systems, including a really complicated five-star system. And most interestingly, it discovered KSC 8462852. See the videos on that star on this channel. Personally, I think we should be manufacturing ever-improving and more capable Kepler spacecraft assembly line style and watching as much of the sky as we can. Given the success of this mission and the subsequent public engagement through the Planet Hunters program where citizen scientists could help discover numerous exoplanet candidates and weirdness like KIC 8462852 which was found by volunteers. One interesting result announced in the release was that a group found that small planets such as Earth fall into two general groups, rocky ones like Earth or Mars, and another type of planet more like a mini Neptune. Rocky planets are pretty common it seems, but for some reason some planets go one direction and develop swelled hydrogen and helium atmospheres and become Neptune-like, but about half do not and remain rocky like Earth. Ultimately, this announcement and further study of the candidates will help to determine just how common Earth analog planets really are. One thing about Kepler is that it can only see planets that happen to pass within its line of sight. If a planet orbits a star but didn't pass in front of it from Kepler's perspective, then the spacecraft couldn't see it. This means that as many as a hundred times more exoplanets are out there within the Kepler field than what Kepler could actually see. But those planets are discoverable as well through the gravitational wobbles they cause in their star. Unfortunately, this method isn't as good at discovering Earth-sized planets, but the more we know about the uniqueness of our planet, or lack thereof, the closer we come to finding life in the universe.